Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Dae, who are the number two seeds. Been in the final of the Super Series finals on all three previous occasions, but my goodness, they had to work hard yesterday to overcome their Malaysian opponents, Ku Kian Kiat and Tam Boon Hyok, an hour and two minutes for winning through 21 18 in the deciding game. And Ian, the reaction at the end of that match yesterday against the Malaysians by the Koreans was very telling indeed. Yeah, it was interesting. There was a bit of press this morning where uh, Lee Yun Dae was saying, you know, there's been a lot of rumours in the press that they're injured and they were coming here maybe just to play half a game, take the points. He said, no, 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 they're here to try and win it. Yeah, Jung's got a bit of a shoulder problem, but they wouldn't be here if they didn't think they could actually win it. And certainly the reaction after the win yesterday meant they showed how much it meant to them. Yeah, absolutely. But this an intriguing contest because both pairs bronze medalists from the World Championships earlier this year. And so it should be a good contest as far as the Indonesians are concerned. Well, they're fresh from winning a gold medal at the Southeast Asian Games. Number eight on the Super Series ranking list. Having missed just one of the Super Series events, and of course that was Hong Kong because that clashed with those Southeast Asian Games. So Lee Yong Day, 23 years of age, his partner, 29. And as I say, been in the final of the Super Series finals on all three previous occasions, winning back in 2009. Very, very consistent pair, the Koreans have actually reached number one in the world ranking. When we were commentating on the China Open, we got our statistics wrong there, Ian, didn't we? Because uh, checked the record books, and with the help of a colleague of mine, we've come up with the answer, which was that they became world number ones on the 20th of January 2009, and we think it was for three weeks. Current world ranking of number two, of course. And there's Mohammed Hassan, 24 years of age, as indeed is his partner. 31 and 15, and that translates into two titles this year. Indonesian Grand Prix, and of course those sea games, the Southeast Asian games that I've already mentioned. Reached the final of the Japan Super Series event earlier this year second time they've been in the final of the Japan Super Series because they reached the final back in 2008 and probably in that was the the time when we all really started taking notice of Asan and Septino. And there's our court officials for this men's doubles. Oh, we did briefly see the head-to-head -head. Certainly on current form, very, very difficult to separate these two pairs. Of course, the Koreans have been on a terrific run. 11 finals this year from 16 individual tournaments played winning six titles, including the Korean Super Series, the first ever Premier Super Series event, then the China Masters, then the Danish and French, and that was three Super Series tournaments that they played together that they won. Because, of course, the Japan Super Series interrupted that run between China and Denmark, but these two Koreans played with different partners. 
they met just once previously. And on that occasion won by the Koreans. Three years ago at the Ladies India Grand Prix Gold event. On my right, Mohammad Assad, born of Pakistan, Indonesia. And on my left, Jung Jae Sung, Lee Yong Dae, Korea. Lee Yong Dae, Isa, Bona Sertano, Naval Play. Service over. One love. Younger brother of Olympic champion Marcus Kido. Sertano. Service over. One, four. Very talented family because another sibling, Pierre Bernadette, been specialising recently in mixed doubles. of that rally as with last night's match quite unusual not used to seeing the Hyundai rotate up out away from the net but with Jung's shoulder problem he's taking more responsibility in the rear court this week Four, one. Jung finding himself more in the net position following a lot of shuttles in smash Three, playing with good margin going to the center of the court but getting to the non-racket side away from the racket Four, five. Well, cooled out that looked very close yeah I was very surprised by that game that playing flat to this Korean pair thrive on those flat exchanges here we see it again good example you've got to go short or deep there over over that mid-court position or in front of it but it's very difficult to go through it with speed both these Korean players very quick rackets quick reactions on the mid-court As far as the Indonesians are concerned, this really is a must-win situation, isn't it? Because their match, last match on last night against Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen, went down in three games. They, they want to keep their chances alive of qualifying for the semi-finals. Really have to beat the Koreans. Never disappointed there, that's his favourite. Push down to the midcourt, step out, intercept on the straight. Yeah, good play. 
seven, eight. Service so over. Nine, seven. Judgment. Service over. Eight, nine. Oh, nice. Nine, four. Nice change of pace. Fast footwork, fast preparation, and then just. Cutting across the shuttle, taking the pace off. Oh. Oh, that was extraordinary defence. <laughs> I thought he was going to get back the next one as well. He nearly got a net called winner off it. See, he wasn't far away. Got it up there. Certainly not lacking commitment. Controlled rally from the Korean pair, maintaining the attack, working to get their partner in the rally the whole time. Unorthodox sort of defence there. That's with the mixed. Our Indonesian coach there, again, I find that a little surprising. Got a big squad of players here. With a few coaches. Not sure what's happening there. Well, I do hope everything's all right and that the yep. coach isn't poorly. 11 Play. from Lee and Day. That is remarkably clever, isn't he? Instinctive player. Tactically astute. Yeah, reads the play very well. Sees what options are available. Closes the spaces down. I don't like missing that one. Changed the direction of the service a little bit, anticipated the straight reply and then missed it. That was a great low serve. Oh, just so singing his praises, that's a couple of of easy errors really from Lee Hyundai. Let the Indonesians back in here. Oh, he's changed his racket. Except on earth. Oh, and what a glorious shot there from his partner, Mohamed Hassan. Well, the Koreans were really distracted. They were looking what was happening on the other side of the court and they weren't sure if it was in or out.
Over ambitious with that final attempted defensive shot. Really very static in his defensive stance. Watching in the wings. Uh, that goes down as a yeah, Koreans, simple error, really. Yeah, Koreans having a real bad patch here at the moment, you'd have to say. Not uncharacteristic errors, just relaxed, you could see it there. Didn't step onto the shuttle. Just in case what you're wondering all the, what all the rumpus was about. Danish women's doubles pair have just beaten Fuji and Kakiwa of Japan. And the two Japanese players, each of them throwing a racket into the crowd. And lucky fans and souvenirs. But these men's doubles players too experienced to get distracted by the noise in the background. Static there. Yeah, working from the back of the court, Lee Yong Day. Channel attack. Chang Jae Sung involved. It, it's almost quite odd for me to watch this, Ian, because it's in such contrast to their normal formation. It's almost as if I'm watching a different pair. Well, it's a different combination, that's for sure. But it's not really that that's caused the problems here. They've just made too many easy errors. They've kept the Indonesian opponents in the game, really. Missed a lot of easy chances around mid-court, forecourt, which you wouldn't expect. Same again. He was ready. He'd read it. Missed it. Oh. 
level again. Union's really struggling to impose themselves on this game at the moment. BMC, not impressed. On the line. There's a real catalogue of errors in this first set, you have to say. It's a bad misjudgment on the baseline there. Should be clearly in. Some game points to the number two seeds. I think. No, I think it's on Jung the Koreans. I think he's saying Jung hit the net. Oh my goodness. Well, well it'll be interesting to see this. Yeah. I hope we do see that again. Couldn't make out who he had called the fault on. Yeah, he called it on Jung when he came in and played that little net push. Yeah, he did actually touch yeah, the net. That's call. a very good call. And certainly none of the players realised it. They all continued. No, 20 all. Extra points required. Okay. Koreans didn't impose themselves, really. Had several chances in that point to take the first game. And back all square again. Oh, and that's a bad error this time from the Indonesians. Really above the net. In the forecourt. You can't miss those. Wow. Second game point has come and gone. more natural habitat there at the front of the court reading the play well winning the point good interception there read the straight reply so third game point opportunity oh strings gone I don't believe it on court with a new racket. Well, it'd have been better with the broken strings, it wouldn't have gone out the back. Well, third time lucky it was. There's a whole open court when he played this one. That's when his opponent had gone dashing off court. And that's the final error. So the opening game to the number two seeds, Jung and Lee. 23-21 in 19 minutes of play. Well, you said it, Jill, third time lucky. And I do think they're a little bit lucky to win that first game. Made a lot of unforced errors. 
clearly struggling with this new formation they're playing this week where Lee Hyundai is having to put, take more responsibility in the rear court due to the injury to Jung's shoulder. Kim Moon Su working hard to get them organised here because there were times there where they really didn't look as though they knew what they were doing. Yeah, that's why I made the comment that it was almost like watching a completely different pair. Yeah. Same names, same faces, but it didn't look like the pair we no normally see. Well, it is strange. They've got a lot of natural set plays, which, of course, are being disturbed by this un injury to Jung. Normally, he'd be providing the penetration from the rear court. Lee Young-Day reading the game from the forecourt, but at the moment, it's Lee Young-Day having to take more responsibility in the rear court, and Jung not, not as natural in the front court position tends to block a lot rather than following through and attacking from the front court. Again, Jung struggling to finish in the front court. Had three or four chances. Is he going to get there? Yeah, gets there in the end. Well, he was quite close as to not bringing that down steep enough. Five or six chances. Made it in the end. 268. We had a 272 yesterday, didn't we, from Tan Boon Hyong? Oh, that's a good smash. Yeah, that's well placed. Jim moving over to cover the space in the centre of the court. Getting caught with a switch attack to the outside. more decisive wasn't it from yeah it'll be interesting maybe if he has to play that role throughout the whole week and they go deep into the tournament might might actually improve his game on the forecourt yeah because normally he's playing with somebody who's so good there that he doesn't have to do very much in the front court just has to be solid really whereas here there's more responsibility on him to actually finish the points be aggressive in the forecourt similar sort of scenario in a way to what you were describing in the women's doubles with the Japanese players being asked to play mixed doubles to improve their net play and through circumstances here with his injury problems outcome the same yep Septano following in, forcing the Koreans off that net position. See it here how deep the Koreans happen to defend there. Yeah, again, Jung rotating in. Yeah, 
better placement in that final shot from John. Yeah, a little bit too flat from the Indonesians there. They go through the net player rather than blocking in front or turning across the net or going over the top, forcing the Koreans to out of formation. Chance gone. Played the block, stepped off, anticipated the push. Again, mistake from above the net. Oh. Well, he knew it was the right idea, trying to play the drop shot as the Koreans once again had backed off quite deep in their defensive stance. Yeah, the frustration that he made the error. Well, guilty of not really pushing forward and taking that return early. Let the shuttle come to him and then made the error. Service over. Still a match with a lot of errors, though, isn't it, Jill? Yeah, surprising no rhythm so. to it. No. Ah. Mm, missed another overhead. This time on the angled smash. Yeah, at this level, you just don't expect to see errors from above the net. Forced errors from below the net, yeah. Errors from the front of the court where there's the quick exchanges and you're fighting to keep the attack. And the shuttle oh. above the net at this level. You don't expect to see them missing them. nice yeah this time he stepped onto it didn't he took it really early and that fixed the Koreans deep in the court that makes the block effective advantage in the opening game here in the second three-point advantage oh look at that 279 well, that's one of the rare smashes is hit and when he did hit it it was hard it's just under 174 miles per hour and that's with an injured shoulder well, he's used the smash sparingly and the Indonesians were certainly taken by surprise with the power of that smash you see the speed of it, it that explains it. Got one, 20 seconds.
Oh. Uh, frustration written all over in there. Again, had the opportunity above the net, mid-court. Indonesians retreating, one of them on the floor, puts it in the net. shot there just taking the pace off guiding the shuttle down you will see it didn't try and hit it hard brought the shuttle down that forces Jung to take it late there's no pace on it and he makes the error and good precision to the line and a good comeback Swing your point since the mid-game interval in favour of the Indonesians. time it was a short lift tried to win it himself rather than playing for his partner oh my word that is terrific well again said it in the first game when he does get on the front court he's got such great vision look at this that's lovely Draws the Indonesian player across the court, following the play. Quick change of direction. Now, frustration once again for Hassan. Another broken string. patient build up that time from Mohammed Hassan yeah nice combination lots of changes of pace changes of direction eventually going for the power play down the line Lee and Day on the front court reads the play. Easy kill. Oh. Oh, slightly flatter smash. Took the pace off a little bit. Possibly caused by the strings breaking. Oh, yeah, the strings have already gone back. Yeah.
Oh, more strings gone. Yeah. Because of the strings going in Lee Yong Day's racket, Jung Jae Sung taking responsibility. Seemed to rush that. Yeah, didn't seem to settle, did he? Oh, that's just incredible. No wonder he smiles. The Indonesians given up on the rally. They thought they'd already won it. Yeah, I thought Look this was a that. winner. There they go, they're relaxed, they're walking back to serve. Oh, fantastic touch. Well, that's one of the most extraordinary shots I think I've ever seen. Quite brilliant. Opportunities now for Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day to record their second win in the group, which would secure their place in the semi final with one more group match to go. Second time of asking. Another second victory in Group B for the number two seeds, Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day. 23 21, 21 16. Well, there was one shot in that match that I'll remember for a long, long time, and that was that cross-court net shot from Lee Yong Day. Perhaps some of the other rallies are not that memorable, but that was special. What a special net shot that was. Two straight games, 23-21, winning the first game on their third game point. 39 minutes in duration. And the second game, 21-16. So that's two wins out of two in Group B. 
for Jung and Lee. And they will definitely be in the semi finals come Saturday. But of course, tomorrow, still the last of the group matches that will all determine who does indeed go through to the semi final stages. Well, once again, we've had a terrific evening of badminton, session of badminton. Four sessions now completed. Two sessions a day, of course, and it all started this evening with mixed doubles. Then it was women's singles and Sina Nawal overcoming the left-hander Sato in two straight games. Then it was the turn of the former World and Olympic champion against the current World and Olympic champion in the men's singles. Well, for those of you who have written off Taufik Hidayat, he just showed today that he still has an awful lot of talent and he's still a big threat. Going down in two games, though, to Lindan. Then it was women's doubles, and despite injury worries yesterday with Tian Ching, she and her partner came through, as indeed did the favourites in the men's doubles encounter because the number two seeds in the men's doubles, Jung and Lee, also winning in two straight games in their Group B match. As I say, that concludes play for this evening on day two of competition from the leaning BWF World Super Series finals. There's a confirmation of all the results of this evening's matches. Just one of our matches going the full distance. That was the first one, the mixed doubles. And what a close encounter it turned out to be after a really rather poor second game by the Indonesians, fought back in the third, but went down fighting. Just to remind you, of course, that two sessions tomorrow starting.